Hi everyone, welcome to part B of section 1.3. In this video, we're going to be looking at several examples for limits of exponential functions. So let's get right into it. So we have eight examples coming up that I wanted to take a look at. Let's look at this first one. And I think what I'm going to do as, I, and as I'm starting each one of these is I want to spend the time to really just focus on getting the graph down first and then the limits are going to be very, very easy. So the first thing that I notice here is that, okay, I've got a horizontal reflection, okay? So I want to keep that in mind and I'm just going to sketch a graph. First thing I want to put in the graph is like, okay, where's that horizontal asymptote happening? That's going to be at negative two right there. And um, so this is two thirds right here. So normally two thirds is less than one. And so that would be decay and it would decay to this line from left to right. But since I do have that horizontal reflection, what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to take my graph and I'm just going to flip it backwards. Uh, the, the function that I just put down, I'm just going to flip that so that now it becomes a growth function. And that's essentially what it looks like. I don't, I don't really care what the y-intercept is. I don't really care what the x-intercept is. I'm not gonna spend the time to be too specific on that. I just wanna sketch. Because now that I see this, the limit as x approaches infinity, so infinity is over here on the right, I can see that the y values are getting increasingly larger. The y values are going to positive infinity for our limit. All right, here in example two, um, I notice here again that I'm going to just start out with a, with a quick graph real, real quick. I'm going to put in my horizontal asymptote. So horizontal asymptote, boom. Let's just, let's just call that negative four right there, okay? Um, and so what I'm noticing are the reflections that might be happening. So I do have a vertical reflection, but I don't have any um, horizontal reflections because that x in the exponent is not negative. So what I'm looking at next is like, okay, normally uh, this is decay because this is going, it, the point four, the B value is in between zero and one. So normally this would be decay and it would decay out like that. But since I do have that vertical reflection is going to reflect over the asymptote, that horizontal asymptote right there. And so all the values, all the values that I had right there, I just flip it over to the other side. So then now it's gonna look something like this. So before it was coming down, but now it's going up to the horizontal asymptote. And so now, okay, now I read the question, x approaches negative infinity. I wanna follow this graph to the left and where are the y values going? Those are going down. So here's that connection to the graph again. And since they're going down, going down to negative infinity. All right, now I have example three here. And I notice that there are two transformations, two reflections happening that I really, really care about. First is I do have that horizontal reflection and then I also have a vertical reflection. So let's see what happens here. I'm gonna start with the graph. All right, so I put my graph in here and then I'm going to start with my Y, um, my horizontal asymptote that's happening at positive three. So I just sketch that in here and I think, okay, so this says two thirds. So that's a value in between zero and one. Normally, normally it's going to die out like that. It's going to decay. But I have some reflections that, that are happening. The first thing is that um, I have a horizontal reflection. So I take care of that horizontal reflection and that I just flip all the values across the y-axis that I just had. Now I'm going to take care of that vertical. And so now I'm just going to take this and I'm going to reflect it across that horizontal axis, the horizontal asymptote that I drew. So let me get rid of this old one. And that's a good sketch of the graph. So now let's examine, okay, as X approaches positive infinity, what are my Y values doing? Well, my Y values are going straight down. So I'm going to get negative infinity. Okay, over here on question four, again, I'm going to start with the graph here. And I'm reading this, okay, as X approaches positive infinity. Well, what are my Y values going to be doing? Well, let's just start again with the horizontal asymptote. So yeah, maybe right there, that might be positive too. And again, I notice I have two reflections happening. So I have a horizontal reflection and I have that vertical reflection. So what I noticed is that my B value is two. So that's gonna be normally, that's normally gonna be growth. And normally it would grow away from that asymptote. But now I'm going to reflect it across the Y axis. And so now it's not growth anymore, it is decaying. And so it's kind of like that. 
And now I'm going to reflect it down. I'm gonna reflect it over the horizontal asymptote. So now all those Y values become to the opposite side of that horizontal asymptote. There we go, erase that old one. And so this is a good sketch of what I'm looking at. Now I can answer my question, what are the Y values as X approaches infinity? Well, these Y values tend to be going closer and decaying closer and closer to that horizontal asymptote. So in this case, that horizontal asymptote is at two. All right, over here in question five, I have the limit as X approaches negative infinity of E to the negative X minus one plus two. So negative X, I see a, a reflection here and uh, that's going to be a horizontal reflection. And so let's start with our graph. So here's my graph and I'm gonna put my horizontal asymptote in and that's happening at positive two. Just put in a horizontal asymptote right there. And so first thing is I have uh, the value E. So E, what you should think about when you hear the number E is 2.71. That's a good estimate for the number E. So 2.71, that is normally growth. That is a value greater than one. But since I had that horizontal reflection, I need to reflect everything across that Y axis. So I'll do that. Now it's dying out. So that's going to be a good estimate of what I'm looking at in terms of my graph. So what's happening as the X values move to negative infinity to the left side here? Well, uh, to the left side, the Y values keep going up to positive infinity. And now over here in question six, I'm gonna start with the graph again. Um, and I'm just gonna keep going through, all right? So like here, I'm just gonna keep going through the way I've been doing all these other problems. I'm going to identify the transformations that I have happening. So I've got this reflection here. I don't have a horizontal reflection and then minus four. So I'm gonna just sketch in that horizontal asymptote at negative four, okay? And so uh, let's see what's happening here. Uh, point four, normally that is going to be decay. All right, so that's going to be decay. But since I have a reflection across that horizontal asymptote, I need to reflect that line that I just drew and reflect it like this. All right, so now it decays up to that horizontal asymptote. Um, and since I didn't have any horizontal reflections, there's no reason to uh, rotate across the y-axis, to reflect it across the y-axis, that means. So what's happening as x approaches positive infinity? So this graph to the right side is going towards negative four. Those y values are approaching negative four for our value. All right, now here in question seven, which you might notice, like don't get into this habit of, all right, I'm gonna keep drawing sketches, I'm gonna keep graphing things, right? What I, all I really need to do is read my limit. In this case, it says the limit as X approaches three. I'm not going to positive infinity. I'm not going to negative infinity. So you wanna just rack your brain. Okay, what can I do when I, when I see that? Oh, I just wanna substitute in the value here into our function. So I'm gonna substitute in E to the two minus three plus two. Well, uh, two minus three, that gets me e to the negative one plus two. And I do want to simplify this just a little bit. Um, e to the negative one, that negative is going to cause a reciprocal. So now I have the reciprocal of e, which is one over e plus two. Now, uh, I really like this answer. Um, I know some mathematics teachers, those teachers might ask you to, to condense it into one fraction. I actually think that this looks really clean. And so I'm gonna leave it as that being our answer. Now that is going to be an ir irrational number, but that's okay. We have the exact answer, which you need to be really comfortable with seeing as we move forward and further and further into calculus. Moving on to question eight here, I have the limit as X approaches negative two of this function. Again, we're not in the habit of uh, just graphing and reading what's happening in, um, as X approaches infinity or negative infinity, we read the question first. And so with negative two, I'm gonna substitute that in for the value X. So I have one over two to the negative, negative two minus three plus three. Okay, so then uh, let's see what happens. Negative, negative two, that's two, but then minus three, that's gonna get me negative one. So I have one half to the negative one plus three. I'm gonna bring it up over here and um, so think about this, like what happened in problem seven when we had an exponent of negative, uh, a negative exponent, we would have the reciprocal of our fraction. So I had one over two here, the reciprocal would be two over one. 
So now I have two plus three, which gets me five. What you may want to do in this problem is uh, put this function into your calculator and look exactly at the limit as x approaches negative two and notice that it does come out to be five. And that's going to conclude section 1.3 on these limits for exponential functions. You do have your homework coming up. Make sure you guys get that and reach out to me if you do need any help. I'm Mr. Hernandez and I'm always here to help.